you are tuned into the Power Chord Hour right here on 107.9 WRFA. And uh, maybe you're listening on the Power Chord Hour podcast, watching us on YouTube. However you're checking this out, thank you for checking it out. I'm very excited, actually. I wasn't sure. We have an episode for you next week, but we have a, a nice kind of midweek for you one out here because I want to get it out before uh, Dave comes to Jamestown. we got Mr. Dave Hill with us making his triumphant Power Chord Hour return. Uh, we're going to yeah. talk about a couple things. Dave's band, uh, Valley Lodge, has a brand new record out now, Shadows in Paradise. Too good not to check out. That is out now everywhere. And uh, yeah, if you're listening on the radio show and you're in the Jamestown area or somewhere near, he's performing right here in Jamestown August 1st at the National Comedy Center for this year's Lucy Fest and uh, also Erie PA, a quick uh, 40 minutes up the road on uh, the next day, Friday, August 2nd. So even if for some reason you can't make it to the uh, Jamestown show right up the road in Erie, tickets for uh, both of those are now available online. So yeah, let's get into it. Dave, how you doing? Good. How are you? I'm doing really good. You were uh, you are our last guest of 2023. Now you're our final guest of July. Great to have you back. How Man. have uh, how have the shows been? I know you've been on the road a decent amount this summer. If I'm not mistaken, you're just in Minnesota not to maybe days ago. How how have the shows been so far? They've been great. They've been getting better and better, and um, <clears throat> you know, bigger crowds, which is nice. And uh, I feel like I'm getting better at what I do, which is uh feels good so and this is the goal you know to try to just be the best dave that i can be so yeah i feel like i'm getting better at what i do so that's cool i do want to i want to ask i mean of a specific show the one that you did that i wish i could have made it to i know you did that steven page summer camp it looked like a yeah. lot of fun how'd that go it looked uh, really that was, interesting. That, that was a blast i mean that was like a yeah a camp uh they do these camps at Full Moon Resort in the Catskills sort of area. And uh, a lot of musicians, and you know, have done things there uh, in the past. You know, I did one with Milk Carton Kids there once. I've done Rhett Miller's Songwriting is Magic Camp, and I'm doing that again in September. And Stephen's camp was a total blast. It was me, Stephen, well, Stephen primarily, I should say, um, Mo Berg from the Pursuit of Happiness, Chris Murphy from Sloan, Craig Northey from Odds, a great Canadian band, and then me and Bobcat Goldthwaite as well. And um, it was it was just a blast. It was like three days and three nights of uh, of uh, just you know, like everyone doing shows separately and together and. I don't know how many people were there, but the idea is like kind of these, uh, you know, intimate shows that are like, you know, less than a hundred people probably Ooh. for, you know, several days. And, you know, we all have meals together and it's super fun, good vibes. And, uh, I had an awesome time. Um, so yeah, it was awesome. I love all those guys and, uh, met all sorts of nice folks. There was a table, uh, where Canadians and Scottish people had both put like all these Canadian and Scottish like desserts and things like that. So like candies and chocolates and just added to the mayhem, you know, good times. There's a bear sighting, really oh, all nice. the things, all the things you hope for. <laughs> What's more rock and yeah. roll than a bear. Exactly. <laughs> let's uh you know let's get into the new record it's it's funny because last time you were on i mean you were just releasing the awesome game so i mean we we're kind of going all over the place but i mean you're also a very prolific person we talked for like it was like an hour-long interview and i feel like we hardly touched anything it was very easy to like write questions for this so i mean we talked a little bit of valley lodge last time but i want to get more in depth this time let's talk about the new record how long has shadows in paradise been out i know it's new but i know it's not like you know been out for a week per se yeah i think it's been out about three months maybe april 19th it came out i think something like that so what is that yeah about three months about three months now and uh it's our fifth album which is crazy uh we're not like the most prolific fifth album in about 19 years so uh but yeah and i mean I, I like the record so um, I mean, I, I always like all the records at, you know, at first and then over time, I, my opinion kind of changes, but, um, I think I like this one. Uh, I would put it right up there. There's really only one record. I won't say which, which I don't think is, uh, that good. 
in retrospect. I like that you don't say. Let people guess. Let people guess what one you're talking about. Yeah, and it's it's still good. Don't get me wrong. But it's I just it's just not my favorite. How but I really uh, like this one. How far back did you start, you know, kind of working on this one? And I'm talking about like I'm I'm not even talking like first song. I'm just talking about you're like, all right, yeah, I guess Valley Lodge, like time to do another record. You know, how far back did you kind of get those very, very beginning stages of this? It always ends up taking like a year to do the records, I think. You know, the intention is always like, oh, get it done in like two weeks. But with everything else going on in life and kind of, you know, kind of getting new songs along the way that you're more excited about than maybe, you know, but so it pro I'd, I'd have to look, but I'm guessing it probably took like a year by the, from the first day of tracking to the end, I think. Not too bad. Um, not which, too bad. Which is like, you know, it's not like recording the whole time, not like Metallica or something, you know, but like, you know, recording, coming back a couple of weeks later, three weeks, one week, one day, another week, you know, that sort of thing. Not too like labor intensive. When you do that, though, like, do you because I feel like a positive from that, at least from an outsider perspective, is the whole thing where like you're still it almost goes what you were saying about where like. You love every album and then, you know, as time goes on, not that you don't like it, but like your feelings change. Like, is it almost, do you almost feel like it's beneficial for songwriting that you kind of did it in spurts like that? Where like, I assume you could sit with a riff for a couple weeks. Cause if you're not recording again for a couple weeks, you can really sit and think about what you did that last session. I mean, do you feel like, and I guess that helps and hinders depending on the kind of artist you are, but does that kind of help you when it's done in spurts like that? And you can kind of sit and think about your ideas a little more than if you're just recording for yeah. say, days. Yeah, I think so. And, it, you know, I mean, there's a lot of ways to look at it. You know, I th I, I think the the best songs for me, and, I, you know, I think a lot of people say this, is are kind of the ones where you're like, oh, cool. All kind of comes to you at once or very quickly. And other ones you kind of have to beat on for a while. And uh, so, yeah, I think doing it over time gives you, t you know, Sometimes you're really excited and you come back two weeks later and you're like, oh, well, no, I don't like that. But I don't know. Then other, you know, then there's like some one of the songs on the record after school. I'd written for like an imaginary band that existed in my head, which is really what Valley Lodge is, too. I mean, I kind of like kind of write for this imaginary band that doesn't even exist and just kind of then we do actually exist. But but I don't think of it like. I don't know if this makes sense, but I don't think of it like I'm writing a song for me to sing, even though I end up singing it and playing it and all that. But I kind of think of it in terms of this thing that exists in an alternate universe. And um, I had written this one song that, and the things that I'm like inspired by, by the time it's done, and I'm like, oh, this is what I was thinking. Like you, you hear it and you're like, what? <laughs> doesn't you know like you know one song on the record i was like wanting to just do my best try so hard to write like kind of a disco pop song and you know then it was when it was done tom bozier who you know recorded and co-produced it he was like oh it reminds me of the stones you know even though they did like a 70s disco record so maybe that was that aspect of it but i don't know there was one song i was kind of like I want it to be like a teenage Japanese punk band. And I was going to write a whole record based on this band that existed in my mind. Ended up only just writing one song and it wasn't even going to put on the record. And then we just ended up doing it last minute. And I think it's one of, some people say it's the best one on the record. It's um, a really good song. Thank you. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, I think with anything I do, I'm really just trying to entertain myself, you know, in the Valley Lodge, you know, we want the, you know, everyone who's working on it to be having fun and be psyched on it. Um, and it's just, you know, the idea of kind of making a, making a record that you wished existed in your collection or whatever. I don't, I don't really think of it like, what is our next record? I think of like, what is the next fictional record? 
that I'm going to listen to. <laughs> Not that I sit around and listen to the rec the Valley Lodge records, but when they're done, you know, I'll listen to them. Like, cool, that was fun. You know, going. I I was thinking about it since you mentioned it, and like. I don't know, maybe maybe it doesn't at all, but when you kind of get in your head like that, where like you say, you're not writing, you almost remove yourself from the situation. Like you're, some of those songs you're not writing with you in mind playing and performing. Does that at all, do you feel like take off any kind of pressure and make it easier to write? And I don't know, I mean, I haven't written that way, so that sounds interesting, but I'm taking it as like, I could almost see where it almost makes it easier to write the song in the sense that there's less pressure because it's not for you, you're not performing it. I mean, is that is that anything or no? Is that kind of something I'm putting on? No, it? totally. Like I, you know, I I really like doing things that are, you know, it's like when someone asks me, you know, once in a while. I don't really do it regularly, but like to compose a piece of music for something then I'm able to think from a totally different space, you know, even like a friend asked me to do like intro music for their podcast recently. And then I, then I'm just like, Oh, I'm making music that has nothing to do with me. I'm not thinking of my connection to this at all. And in a way it's kind of amazing, or like a really fun. I mean, I try to be that way anyway, but, but I think, you know, when, I'm, when it's truly like, oh, this is just this thing that's going to exist. I can do anything. And it's not, my name's, my face isn't attached to it, you know. So, uh, yeah, I, I have like, it's super freeing or whatever to, to do stuff that way. But I, I try to think that way anyway, in general, that, you know, I can do whatever I want. And there's no, no rules to it or anything just do whatever. How about for like, you know, writing, writing a song. And um, I guess I'll also compare this to like, you know, writing, writing a uh, comedy and stuff as well. But like when you're writing a song, do you generally have like that? Like how long are you working on something before you go? This just isn't working. Whether that means you scrap entirely, whether that means you just kind of put it to the side for now. I mean, do you have a general, would you say amount of time, you know, we work on a song for a day and then it doesn't work. We work, we like painfully work on a song for a couple months, just, trying and trying you know how are you normally with that before you kind of go okay let's either get back to this later or let's just scrap this idea i think you know if there's an aspect of it that i really like um it's kind of always up for grabs you know with like a song idea um can come back and become something at some point you know like You know, I'll, there there's certain riffs that'll be bouncing around. I'll have in my head for years, and then, like, I'm I'm trying to think. Yeah, I mean, like on the first Valley Lodge record, there was there's a song called "Hanging On" that I really like, and I think like the main riff for that song I had in my head for like six years. It was just kind of in my head as like a fun riff that I would just play in my head. I never even, because that's for most of it just is in my head. You know, I don't really sit down and like write stuff. I don't, you know, it's kind of like comes to me, you know, like the song Go from the third record. That's the song, the soundtrack to, or the theme song to the John Oliver show on HBO like that riff came to me like i just woke up in the middle of the night and was lying in bed i had really bad jet lag because we had just come back from a uh, tour of japan you know and i don't know if you've like traveled like to those like you know for me like asia and australia and stuff when you come back i'm just like a mess for like a few weeks and i just woke up with that whole song pretty much in my head and wow. I just woke up and kind of hummed it into, I just downloaded a four track app. And I just hummed like pretty much the whole song minus the words was, is like just all hummed into my phone at four in the morning. <laughs> and then I went back to sleep. And uh, so stuff just kind of comes that way, really. Like there's exceptions, like the first song, Daylights, on the new record shadows and paradise that one is one of the very 
few things I've ever like sat down where I was like, I'm like, I want to write a cool riff that incorporates open strings. And that was kind of like what I felt like doing. Cause uh, I knew there was like power in that, you know, like sonic power or whatever, musical power, not like a power of the people or anything. Though I guess that too, maybe, I don't know. But yeah, that one I was just like, oh, I wanna see if I can write a riff that I like. And so then I ended up liking it. And I, I actually couldn't really even play it at first because it's kind of, it's really easy, but it's also kind of hard because you got to move around really fast to do this one part of it. And if you're not used to it, you have to kind of, but now it's really easy, but initially it was not. How close was that? I mean, it sounds like it is, but like, can you pretty much get that out of your head? Like what you hear in your head, can you pretty much get out and record? I mean, is it normally pretty accurate to what you're hearing in there? Because like you say too, like with your, what you just brought up, like you can hear music in your head, but it doesn't mean like it may be very difficult to play or it may come out like differently. I mean, it sounds like you're fairly accurate at getting out what you're hearing in your head by the sounds of it. Yeah, I mean, sometimes it's physically hard. I mean, again, like the, the riff to... Um after school they're not hard like it's and it's like once you do them it's like oh that's not hard but like if you're not used to it and you're kind of going da -da -da -da, like it's kind of hard and just kind of to get used to doing it so like that was another one i couldn't really play it at first and it's not like i got better at guitar to play it i just kind of got better at playing that riff if that makes any sense oh yeah no it does It'd still be um, nice if you just woke up like that much, you know, you just wake up even better of a guitar player than you were the day before. Yeah, well, that's always the hope. But, you know, I mean, the same thing with uh, Come Back to Bed on the Fog Machine record, the fourth record. That was another riff like I couldn't play at first um, and it took me a while to figure out how to play it. And then same with my bandmates, like it took them a while to like, Cause it's kind of like uh, a lot of jumping around. Like it's not like fast really. It's, but it's just kind of like a lot of this and that, you know, kind of, kind of going back to that, like idea where, you know, keeping song or like how long you work on something for you kind of like set it down for a while. I mean, getting into more of the, you know, writing side, I guess, you know, in comedy, but like I say that very generally, cause I know, I mean, you've written books, you do, you know, you do stand up, you do a bunch of different things. Are you around, are you kind of the same way with that? Where like, if you have an idea for, I guess I'll call it a bit or a joke or whatever it is, you know, do you, do you kind of use that about the same way as you do with music where maybe not, maybe this isn't all great, but there's things I should probably keep because maybe later I can pick up and use here. You know I mean? Can you almost treat, I guess, could you treat stand up and stuff in the same way where like a song, it's like, you could insert that riff from this other song and it works really well over here. Maybe there's this melody that was like over in this song that works better over here. Can you kind of do that with comedy? Can you craft like, you, you kind of get what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, there are similarities, but I think it's different. I mean, comedy for me, and I don't know if it's like laziness or what, but I'm not as good at, you know, like I don't sit down to write songs, but, you know, once I have like a song idea, I'm pretty good at like kind of like running it over and over in my head or you know on the guitar and kind of figuring out how it goes or whatever or how it's like pleasing to me you know because really i'm just writing a song that i want i want to hear so i'd say it's easy to just kind of go run that riff again and again in my head and like what comes next and sometimes it's all very comes very quickly and you know jokes can be that way but i think like um jokes i'm kind of always kind of like waiting for them floating around and it's the same thing it's like entertaining myself i guess like you know because it's the same thing i'm really only trying to make myself laugh you know i'm not like i never write jokes like like oh what is an audience gonna want me here i don't give a fuck really um i mean i want the audience to have a good time but i'm not thinking like oh, this is in the news, I should talk about that. I don't really think that way. 
I just kind of like entertaining myself in my bedroom as a kid or something. And then whatever I come up with, I'm just going to go say that, do that on stage. That's kind of how I think of that. Um, and it takes me longer, like, or maybe not. I don't even know. Maybe it's the same. Maybe it is exactly the same, but what I don't know. Bringing, what you're bringing up there too, like, I, I do feel like you can apply just, I mean, I guess in music in general, where that like not forcing of things, like I was talking about next week's uh, next week's guest is uh, Chris Ballou from the President of the United States, and we were talking about sure. this. Oh, he he's a great dude. He, he's like, that was his second time on the show as well, too. Yeah, I'm a big fan. We we've never met. We've met. We've communicated online. I did. Both of us were at your grog shop show last year. Me and Chris were both what, at the show. What's that? Both of us were at your grog shop show last December. I do know me and Chris were at the at the same Dave Hill show. Last yeah, uh, I was bummed I didn't get to talk to uh is that I uh I remember he wrote to me and he was like, Yeah, that was me that set out I was from Seattle. I didn't know and you know until he wrote to me. So and then still never actually met him. Oh, he's a great I mean he's a it, it's his second time on the show as well. He's a really good dude. But it's funny you bring that up because we were like talking about that stuff when we we're talking about it. I mean, obviously that first president's record selling so many copies and being so big, but like like we're talking about. None about nothing about that album was some kind of for nobody sat down and wrote those songs going, wow, this is going to sell millions of records. I mean, like Chris didn't write those songs trying to force something out. And I think with comedy, music, whatever you're doing, if you try to think of the audience in that way or you try to go, well, what's popular? Or what will do that? I think you're setting yourself up for failure. That's almost the opposite of success. I think if you try aiming for that. So, I mean, yeah, yeah. One thousand percent. I think it has to like flow and and be real and i mean i think th those songs the president of the united states of america um yeah you can tell like those songs like sound like they were written to entertain them in the room you know like oh, totally. for fun and that's then that, well, i think when you create from that place the irony i guess is that it ends up resonating with people Whereas if you're like, how do I please people that, you know, uh, doesn't really work. I mean, maybe I'm sure there are some people that can do it. Sting, Sting can probably do it. <laughs> Sting. <laughs> I only say that because he did do an interview where he was like, yeah, I can just sit down and write a hit song whenever <laughs> I want. And I thought he's probably being honest, but what an arrogant thing to say I, I would say so i don't think i've ever asked that kind of question to an artist and had them say that i don't think anybody's been so uh straightforward like yeah i just sit down and write the hits i can do that if i want you know i can just turn that on and off that switch you know the hit switch i can just turn it on i mean some off. people you know, you know the beatles pro could probably do you know i don't this is maybe not true but i'd heard something where they would sit down and be like let's write a swimming pool <laughs> um but they certainly had the capacity to do that so no they, but they, they would certainly be would have been within their rights to say something like that but no i i think uh just again i think there really is something in you know whatever it is music stand up whatever you're doing that like yeah if you were like trying to force something or try to do a certain way yeah i, I don't unless you're like the beatles or sting i think normally it's not it's not normally the best uh way to go but did you did you have to learn that at all i guess that's the other thing is like not not learn it but like did you i don't i'm trying to think of how to word this not that you're like pandering to the audience but did you learn like do you feel like as you went further you learned that you didn't have to do that you know what i mean like as you kept doing it you went well no i can just do my own thing and the people who are into it will find me i don't have to try to conform to this or did you kind of have that from the get-go with with comedy or music honestly either i mean it kind of works for either of them i mean did you kind of have to learn to please yourself before others or did you kind of start with that attitude and you know kind of were i think with comedy i've always been that way where i was really only concerned with what was entertaining to me and i've never thought at all what anyone else would want maybe to my own detriment but <laughs> but i've never thought for a second what you know ultimately you do have to kind of go like well 
they're laughing at this, they're not laughing at that. And you make those adjustments, you know, because in the end, you just want them to be laughing at everything. So you do make the adjustments, but I don't think really it's just a subtraction rather than creating something for the audience to like. It's it's more like, okay, you know, I've used this analogy a million times talking about this, but I'll do it again as like, it's like making like whatever, a plate of brownies or whatever, and you go set it out. And then, you know, you hope that the uh, people want the brownies, but if they don't, then you're like, well, cool. I like brownies. So I'll just eat them. But pushing that uh, flimsy analogy further, I would say, you know, you bake a bunch of different stuff and then you ultimately only set out the things that people have been taking, <laughs> you know, you get rid of the lemon bars or whatever, <laughs> whatever. Some people like those, but, um, uh, and then with music, I don't know. I think because I started that much younger, I mean, I didn't start comedy until I was in my thirties. So I was kind of a late bloomer in that regard and still feel like a late bloomer. Like I still feel like I'm just learning and hopefully really still headed towards my full potential. I, I hope that I haven't achieved it yet. I, I hope there's that there's more growing in every way, but um, with music, you know, because I started playing the bands when I was a teenager, I think it's, I, you know, I was definitely way more like, oh, I want to kind of do kind of what this mix of this and that, like you're kind of more consciously, well, at least for me, like more consciously being like, I want to steal a little bit of this from over here and be like, kind of like this and be like, you know, and be conscious of those things. Whereas comedy, I don't really, th again, don't think like, oh, I want to be like, there's certainly stuff I admire, but I don't go like, oh, I want to write a joke like this guy or, you know, this, you know, I don't think like that with comedy, but music, I think just being such a fan of it, because I'm way more of like a fan boy or whatever of music than I am of comedy. Um, I'm certainly love tons of comedy, but I definitely like love way more music than I like, com you know, comedy, like I'm way more, I love comedy, but probably the majority of it, I, I don't like, because it's so, I think comedy is so much more subjective. So it ends up being a much narrower uh, bunch of stuff that's really going to like, oh, that's my thing, you know, that's what really resonates with me whereas music you can go like well i feel like listening to black sabbath right now and then later i'm going to listen to you know cold train or whatever not cold play to be clear <laughs> um and whatever more i think maybe i'm more eclectic in my interest musically you kind of whereas, like, i'm sorry like, go ahead. Like, like you bring up something there that's kind of, I mean, and you can answer this better, but I, I almost feel like in a way you almost need influence more in music than you do comedy in the sense that if you're going to start in music, you almost need that blueprint where like you need those bands and then you kind of, you know, you go from there. I mean, in the beginning, I feel like everyone almost rips off their favorite artists, whoever that is. And then you find your own voice and you kind of build off that. But in the beginning, I feel like everyone kind of starts with their influences with comedy. Do you feel like you can kind of get away with, building and morphing a a act and kind of getting into that more without trying to build off not build off whatever the people did but like you're saying you don't have to be so influenced like you know i don't know if you get into power pop you know the you might sound like big star in the beginning and then it, that slowly goes away but you still have that influence but then yeah. like with comedy i feel like almost what you're saying is you can start off but you don't need to have the big stars and the, this and that you can just start off almost with a blank slate if that makes if that you makes can sense. i mean i think there's people that do it both ways and there's certainly like very successful people who are just kind of doing another version of something else that already exists or whatever and you know with music like if you were going to be like oh i want i love big star i want to do that even if i mean good luck like if it's like well if, yeah if you can do that go for it you know because most people will fail but there's certainly 
if you could even like be like oh i love big star and then you could be 75 percent as good as big star you'd have a pretty great band oh yeah oh yeah so, you know no notes really <laughs> um but yeah i don't know i mean i think comedy is more i don't know it's like i think it's always going to be kind of a wild west you know like there's sometimes i think it's cool when you see stuff or maybe you stumble upon doing some of your like when like when people are like oh i don't know why that's funny but it's funny that's my i love hearing stuff like that you know i like that yeah whether it's whether you're talking about someone else or me like i think it's cool and someone can find new ways new ways to be funny you know or or just kick some of the nuts which is also always funny a classic it's like big, the that's a big star of comedy that's kind of like that's the, the classic go-to kick some of the nuts <laughs> boom done <laughs> yeah i i don't know that that is very interesting because i almost again i feel like we talk about this forever and you have a better idea than i do because i don't I, I play a little music but i don't i don't do comedy but like you know like you're saying i feel like you can create new ways to make people laugh or like new new routines or whatever whereas with music i mean kind of yeah how many times can you build on like college rock power pop and he can, you know what i mean the genres like you can add to it but i don't know that you can like totally like reshape it or something whereas comedy it sounds like you can kind of go somewhere totally different where like no one you know i don't know nowhere has gone before whereas again with music if you're going for a genre i don't know that you're going to reinvent the genre as much yeah but i mean so i don't know it's kind of cool like you know sometimes people can go like uh kind of mix two things together and but you know you land like somewhere new um you know like a band like i hate god from new orleans one of my favorite bands you know i think of them as like that's simplifying it, but I think like Black Sabbath with Black Flag vocals, and they end up don't sound really sound like either of those bands in the end, you know. Um, that's kind of what I think they're doing. So I'm like, uh, I don't know what my point is, <laughs> but yeah, I, I mean, don't know. Going like on they a conversation came up with another you. thing. They just like took like two ingredients and landed somewhere else with no. It. You that that yeah you, i feel like you can i do get what you're saying too and i think that does work with i hate god like you're saying like you hear black flag you hear black sabbath but it doesn't mean that they really sound like either but you can still kind of tell where like the influences or like the roots kind of are yeah um you know and then you have like i don't know going back i don't know like oasis or something you know when they first came out i was like oh fuck these guys and then because you're like, oh, they're just stealing from the Beatles. And then you go like, well, they're pretty great at what they do. So can't. Then eventually you go like, oh, they're great. You know, so there you go. <laughs> but um, I, you know, I don't know why I bring that up. But um, I don't know what my point is. I'm just rambling. It's okay. I, I had a bunch of points off of just things you said. I don't even know if I asked you a question as much as I was telling sure. you a thought I had off of what you said. So it's all okay. It's all okay. Excellent. Let's Let's get back into the band, though. I mean, has uh, has Valley Lodge had a chance to play any shows since the new record came out? Yeah, we've done two, I think, three. We're about to do our third on Friday here in New York. Oh, nice. And then we're going to play, um, I guess we'll probably play some more in the fall. I'm not sure yet what we're going to do, but. Where are you yeah. playing Friday on the on the this will come out Thursday, so on the off chance someone's listening to the podcast in New York City, where are you playing Friday night? We're playing at a little place called Otto's Shrunken Head in the East Village with um New York Grimm, which is Kevin Corrigan, who's perhaps best known as an actor. Uh his band and and then a great power pop band, Late Cambrian, and then another band, Aliens. So it's gonna be the four of us. We're playing fourth think we'll play at 10 and uh yeah it's just a little place and i think it's gonna be fun nice and nice. then uh yeah we'll play we'll do some other shows in the fall do some how rocking. much 
How much of the new record have you had a chance to play live? Have you gotten like a good chunk in the set? I think we play a couple songs at this point, and we might add another one, probably. Usually, like, we usually end up adding like a couple songs from each record over, you know, with each record that comes out. And then uh, I think we'll, we'll probably play a couple. But I think I think over time we'll learn. The thing is, we record them and like we never really play them as a band when we make the records. So it's kind of like going back and learning them to, to be like, okay, well, how's this go? So we've learned a couple. <laughs> does that does that get harder as time? Because I always think about that with bands, where like I mean, the more albums you have, the more you have to pull from. I mean, does does that ever get more of a pain? The more albums you have, like making that set list, is it harder to try to like? include everything or is it still fairly easy with with the five records uh yeah i don't know i think we just have like favorites especially like from the first record and then i think we play one song from the second two or three from the third i think one from the fourth and i don't know yeah you just kind of there's a bunch of songs i would like to play but you know we just didn't don't know how to do it <laughs> maybe you know i don't know maybe eventually we'll learn a bunch of them maybe what? when when we get our due when the world finally comes to their, its senses realize how great we are you'll be like the replacements of like the the 2010s people won't yeah. take a couple decades they'll go holy shit they wrote this they were so good that and then i'll be like it's too late <laughs> i live in the woods now I'm not coming back. You don't do those flying festival dates. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> Let you know your uh, your guitar rig. I mean, the guitar rig that you kind of used for recording the album. What did you? I always like talking about this. Did you use a bunch of different things? You kind of have you know, kind of an old faithful, you know, kind of same guitar and amps for everything. You know, what would you kind of use on this album? Um. You know, most of the last, pretty much all the records, like one of the guitars, a telly, and the other one's an SG, pretty much. <laughs> like, uh, that's kind of like been the, since the first record, really. Probably the second record, that's not the case. Uh, but the rest of them, that's generally what's going on. Sometimes some less balls in there, but um, yeah, that's pretty much. I don't know. There's always like a bit of everything. A little jazz master, nice. Maybe one one strat overdub. Um, but generally, Tally and SG are the main, my favorite, and I have a great Tally and a great couple great SGs. And uh, no, actually, I don't know. What am I talking about? There's been like everything, three thirties, three thirty fives. But generally, like so far, um, yeah, mostly like kind of old Gibsons and Fenders. But um, I mean, even since doing the Valley Lodge record, I've acquired a lot of new great guitars. That may maybe the next record will be. Totally different. Oh, I have this great Illuminati Orion guitar. It's an aluminum guitar, which I'm really excited to record with. Um, but I have not yet made a record with it yet. You got good taste in guitars. Everything you named off sounded. You, you got very good taste there. With Thank you. I mean, I love guitars. I, they're like interactive art to me. So, And, my, and Tom Bozier, who we've recorded the last couple valley lodge records and we did the two painted doll records that i made with chris reifert you know we use a lot of his guitars how is also. your uh how, how is the like rig the other thing is like you know for i guess people who don't know you know which if, if they're in jamestown you got to go see a live next week but also you know when you do comedy you also have a guitar rig so like i was also wondering how different is your guitar rig if you're playing with valley lodge live Versus if you're doing stand up, like, is it pretty much the same thing? You using, you using anything different there? Like, how much does that differ? 
I'm trying to uh, make them more and more similar just for my own convenience. But um, I would say that the Valley Lodge uh, setup is much simpler because I'm pretty much, you know, I'm singing and I don't really have time to mess around too much with pedals. So I basically have a basic sound that's like breaking up a little bit and then I have boosted sound and then I have just tear your head off sound. Those are the main sounds. Sometimes I'll add some other stuff like flanger and stuff like that. But um, with the comedy shows, they're I, oddly or ironically or whatever, there's just more time to mess around with pedals. So, uh, and then there's things where, like in the category of what I would call comedic pedals. Um, I have like a lot of things like that. You know, Flanger, Data Corruptor by Earthquaker. There's like Btronic Swarm that I'm really into. Uh, and then I just got this pedal, uh, Rancho de la Luna Fred pedal, which is m maybe the greatest pedal of all time. They did it with Grand Casino in Spain or Italy, I forget. But it's like fuzz, octave, reverb phase like it's like four or five pedals all in one Jeez. and um it's really fun and i've had that but i i change i always change everything up like i'll post on my instagram like what the setup is and it changes like i'll use something for one tour and then i'll change it for the next run of shows you know and like I had this big board kind of put together for the last Tenacious D tour that was amazing, but it's like it's too heavy. I have to tear it apart to get it through the baggage without getting hit with a overweight fee. So it kind of defeats the purpose of having a board that you, when you have to tear it apart all the time. <laughs> so, uh, so in this last couple weeks of shows i made like a new board that was just like totally different stuff than i used on the tenacious d tour but equally badass very nice i mean seeing you live with those i was gonna say it seemed like you had a nice pedal board i saw at the grog like i mean it, it seemed like you had like you said time to play with pedals and play around and i also love that you can use pedals for comedic effect that's so not many people i think can use uh, guitar pedals in the way that you use them Oh, thanks. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, I try to think of stupid things to do for the audience's entertainment and my own entertainment. I mean, <laughs> you know, part of it is even like, I even like switch out the pedals just based on the color, just so I'm visually entertained when I look down. Like the initial board I was putting together for the Tenacious D tour, the last one I did with them. I would look down and I'd be like, oh, there's too much like black and gray. So I switched out some of the pedals just so there'd be different colors to look at. Just because, you know, I want I want things to like kind of spark joy or whatever. So I I look down, you know, and I had like a little stuffed uh Dave Hill guitar player from Slade. Oh nice. I have him on my pedal board. So I look down, you know. And I don't feel so alone. I'm like, I got Dave here with me. You're not the only Dave Hill on stage. Yeah, there's. I got if, if this Dave Hill struggling. I look down and see that Dave Hill. Help me out. So yeah, yeah. I mean, and I, I told you last time too. But yeah, I mean, you you really the incorporation of uh, music and guitar and everything with your comedy is like, I mean, it's amazing. You really can't. I like you were. You can't really compare it to anybody. There's no, and it's not oh, the same like you. a guy up there with an acoustic guitar or something. Like you're not like that. It's almost hard to explain until someone sees it in a good way. Like in the best way, I don't think you can oh, explain thanks. your act perfectly. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I mean that's you know why I'm, you know hopefully people keep coming out and I can keep doing it for more and more people. You know, because I think a lot of times, especially like I repost photos and 
videos and things like that. And people are like, my friend's like, oh, you, have you been touring with your band? I'm like, no, I've been doing comedy shows. They're like, oh, all the pictures are you with the guitar. I'm like, yeah, I know. You got to come to the show. <laughs> See what I'm doing. Because, yeah, I do think, you know, it's kind of landed somewhere where I don't, can't really think of anyone that's doing what I'm doing, which is not me patting myself on the back, but it's also definitely me patting myself on the back. <laughs> You deserve it. You're the only comedian I've ever seen pull up a rhythm section to uh, play with him. Not not many people can just pull up a bass player and a drummer for a part of the act. I mean, a, again, that's pretty. Uh, I'd say it's pretty original. So yes, pat yourself oh, on the thanks. Back. Yeah, it's yeah. I've been doing that on the road, and it's really fun because it's kind of different every show. Uh, you know who the players are, and so it makes for you know a different kind of show. Usually um the variety makes it better sometimes once in a while it's not the case but um but usually you know some sort of new magic happens every time i think with getting different players um it's kind of an, a unique experience that excites me every time once in a while it frustrates me but that's very rare <laughs> I, I'm excited to see you do it again next week. It's not your first time playing in Jamestown either, is it? You've done other, you've done the Lucy Fest before, haven't you? I did something there. I don't feel stupid that I can't remember what exactly it was, but I did do something there. Yeah, it was more than likely Lucy Fest. That's a big thing every year. If you were here in the summertime, I would put money down. It was for Lucy Fest. Yeah, I just know I was there with other comedians. It's my only memory of it, really. I mean, I remember <laughs> who the comedians were, but. I mean, I mean, I actually have a lot of memories of it, but I the one the detail I can't remember is whether or not it was part of a festival or not. I can't remember. Well, we're I just excited. When I showed up there and performed. <laughs> excited for you uh, to do it again next week. But uh, what yeah, else? What else do you have kind of coming up in the world of Dave Hill for the rest of 2024? I mean, and I say Dave Hill again. We're talking Valley Lodge. We have so many things going on. I mean, what else do you kind of have going on the rest of the year? Um. There's something brewing that will be announced in a few weeks. Nice. Um, there's a few things coming up that aren't announced yet that are exciting. But, uh, yeah, just more shows. Um, I'm going to open for Down in Mescalero, New Mexico in September. That'll be fun. We were supposed to do it, like, last month, and then the entire town caught on fire, very sadly. Jeez. And had to be evacuated, so we're going to go back and do that. Um, and uh, and I'm I'm writing a comic book series for Oni Press, uh, so I'm working on that. That hopefully be out next year. So um, that's exciting. I've never done that before, and um, slowly getting started on the new book. And what else? I don't know. That's most of it, I guess. That's a lot. I mean, that is, you're one of those people I feel like I could always have on and like filling in hours is not hard. You just have a lot going on. You're not oh. just, you're just. I don't know. I'm just kind of, you know, just kind of doing stuff that I like doing. And I figure eventually I'll just be sitting, sitting here eating cheese and stuff. So in, you know, in 20 years, you could have me on and I'll just be like, I'm just mostly eating cheese. <laughs> I've slowed, I've slowed down a little. Yeah. That's well, uh, anyway. finger, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed in 20 years, I'm, I'm talking to a cheese-eating uh, Dave Hill. Yeah. Well, you're talking to him now. I had some today. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. Uh, where where should we uh, send people? Where do we find the new Valley Lodge record? Where do we find you online? You know, all those, all those great places. Where ought we send people now? Uh, the Valley Lodge record you can get. I mean, it's at the moment digital only in the sad futuristic way it's you know on all the things whatever wherever you get that sort of music uh you know apple music and Bandcamp and all that and uh and then in general you know follow me on instagram at mr dave hill at mr dave hill and um I'm on pet Patreon now. Same thing, patreon.com slash Mr. Dave Hill. That's, I'm the same thing, TikTok threads, all the things. I'm the same. Though I'm mostly Instagram 
Patreon these days. That's what I'm kind of focusing on in terms of the internet. DaveHillOnline.com. I have a website as well. Very nice, Dave. Uh, always great having you on the Power Code Hour. I'm sure we'll do it again next time we have something going on. Anything else Thanks. to uh, let the good people know before we go? Have we missed anything? Um, make sure you register to vote and vote. I think that's important. I'm not going to tell you who to vote for, but I'll tell you to vote. Go vote. That's a good I'll tell you who to vote for if you want me to, but <laughs> just, just DM me and I'll tell you. <laughs> DM. Anyone could probably who probably guess what I would tell you. But. DM it, Mr. Dave Hill, for all. And I'll tell you who to vote for. But I just encourage you to vote as opposed to not voting. Good and, way to uh, stay hydrated. Drink a lot of water. Very important. Drink water and vote, and check out the new yeah. Valley Lodge record. Yes, in that order. <laughs> Very or nice. Reverse order. Well, again, Dave's band, Valley Lodge, new record out now, Shadows in Paradise. That is uh, out everywhere. And if you're listening to the radio show, we'll play it. The radio show is three hours. We'll play the whole damn record if you're listening to the radio show. Please, we'll please do. You'll hear it all. If you're not listening to the radio show, go grab that thing. And uh, also, again, if you're in Jamestown performing right here next week, August 1st at the National Comedy Center for this year's Lucy Fest. And again, if for whatever reason you can't make it there, Erie PA the next day, quick 40-minute uh, drive up the road, Friday, August 2nd. And uh, yeah, tickets are available for both of those. So I'm Anthony Merchant talking to Dave Hill right here on the Power Court Hour.